with the Phoenix Youth Club today. So, Jav, what are we doing here at Edge Baston Cricket Ground today? Hi there. Um, Warwick Shia Khan invited us to, for a tour uh, for the kids. So, right. I give the kids an opportunity to see what happens at the ground and see the changes we've set down behind the scenes. So, we've got a representative from uh, Warwick Shia here and he'll be taking us around today. Everybody here? Yep, everyone yeah. is here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello, Pete. Well, we'll, we'll just go in there and I'll tell you all about where we're going. Yeah, first. sure. Yeah, okay. okay, so if they want to all follow me. All oh, right. Go on. Welcome to Edge Bastion, guys. My name is Pete, and I'm going to be taking you around for about the next hour. Is that what yeah, you said? Right 16 minutes, yeah. Well, usually we start our tours in there, um, mm. but they've just decorated it. And the reason we started in there is because the pictures all around the, the place and they've gone. Yeah, they <laughs> the pictures, so uh, we can't do our usual chat, but don't worry about it. All, all I used to say in there was that the club started in 1882, uh, they moved here in 1885, and they've been here ever since but they modernised it in 2011 and they paid £32 million to modernise the place. Um, it's, it's kind of second best ground in the country now to Lords. Uh, lots of test matches here, as you can see, that's pictures of a test match. Um, but what, what we're going to do first, well, first of all, I'll explain to the, the grown-ups here that normally, <coughs> I'm sorry about this, but I wear healing aids and I've left them at home and I've forgotten them. So if you're going to ask me any questions, shout. <laughs> I'm not deaf, but I'm hard of hearing. So just shout up. And I may have to say, can you repeat that? So many apologies for that. No but what we're going to do, we can head to the fourth floor, which is the very top floor, and we can go out and look at the ground. Um, and then what we're going to do is then look at the press room up there, work our way down to the third floor which is the media centre and that's where the sky sports box is the test match special box um, and a couple of other nice places which i'll take you in then we're going to come down to the second floor um, and look at one of the hospitality places but as you can see today there's a wedding <coughs> when this gentleman is on on his way to the wedding <laughs> in our banqueting suite where unfortunately we can't go in there because the wedding is on. Uh, it's a shame because it looks beautiful. But from there we'll then go down to the first floor where the best bit of the tour is we go into the dressing rooms. So we, we can go into the Warwickshire dressing room which England use. Um, there's lots of kit in there. There's the bats, there's the boards, the helmets and everything else. Um, so <clears throat> Take any pictures you want. There's no restrictions. Oh, thank you. Um, if you want a group photograph, just give me the camera and I'll yep. gladly take it for you. Know. Um, so we can go into the home dressing room, which is the best. Then we can go into the away dressing room for the visitors, which isn't as good as the, the home one. And then we can go out on the balcony. Uh, we can go down the steps. You can pretend you're going out to bat or <laughs> out to bowl. Um, and then... We finish up in something called the 501 room. I'm sure the, the cricket fans have heard of Brian Lara. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, he scored 501 runs in 1994. Yeah. And we have got a room dedicated to yeah. Brian uh, Lara called the 501 room. It's gorgeous. Yeah. So we'll finish on that one. Yeah. And then we'll Sounds end good. up back here. Oh, excellent. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. So, <laughs> hello. Oh, it's this one. Sorry. Just go in that one. Half of us go in that one. Go to number four. Number four. And just okay. wait outside the lift and I'll catch you up. Yeah, okay. That is wow. Wow, that is amazing. Yeah. Because I'm either on, normally on that stand or at a Kali stand. Over there. Yeah, or the that. Stand. Yeah, or I come with the family with the kids and I'm in that in family, the family stand. Family stand yeah. 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 No, I only once sat on that one, right at the back where the yeah. yeah. That was like 20 odd years ago. 
There's the rotunda over there, just to the left of that um, floodlight. Yeah. The green one is um, the Radisson Hotel in Smallbrook Green. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I realize, yeah, I recognize that. But this is it's a, a good lovely photograph place if you want. Do you want to take photos here? Yeah? Yeah. 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 You can. <laughs> oh, feel wobbly. Do you feel wobbly? Hey, let's just record some stuff here. Look at that. Look this way. Hot in here. Oh, it is. Oh. Right, um, I don't know whether I said, but my name is Pete, by the way, so, you know, just shout up if you want anything. But just to tell you, um, you've just asked the question, the building work over there that's happening by the side of our car park, they've actually built building 370 apartments. It's nothing to do with Warwickshire. This is purely for the Birmingham Council, that, and they are to let, not to buy, but there's 370 of them. At the same time, we've done a brand new concourse and a brand new car park in front. So that's pleased a lot of people because there's more car park in space now. Yeah. Probably you know where you are from here. That's Cannon Hill Park. Yeah. I'm sure some of you have been to the Nature Centre or the, the lake over there. Yeah. It's a gorgeous mm -hmm. park. Uh, I was oh, here early, so I had to walk around the lake and it's, it's fabulous down there they're just storing stuff for the building over there hopefully in time this may well be a hotel but we don't don't really know but just to tell you where all you other, are at the all, moment all the other buildings will overshadow this one i mean normally when you're on that Pershaw road yeah you see the cricket and now you've got a big apartment that's right and you can't even see it's the cricket. changed yeah, yeah. drastically i was like i'm so, i was surprised that the cricket ground didn't yeah uh, you know petition against the apartments is that i should think if you're on the top floor living you can see the pitch yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. so this is this is not your television it's not your radio this is the journalists okay. so this is the newspaper room but when there's a big test match on or one of the bigger games, all the press are here, and the two captains, and of course, England captain has changed overnight, we don't know who is going to be the England captain, but last year when England were playing here, Joe Root would be up there, and the other captain, and all the newspaper guys here would be asking them questions. And if it's a test match, usually the Sky Sports people on the BBC cameras all along here, taking the pictures that you see on your television. Okay. A little bit later, we will see the Sky Sports box and the radio box, but as a, just to repeat, this is purely the newspapers. Okay. So once they've done all that, yeah. they then go into this room we're gonna go into now, and they, they do all their writing, but not like the old days where you did write, it's obviously laptops now, and they send all their reports to their newspapers all over the world. And this room we're going in, get your cameras ready, seats 140 journalists. And it's a view to die for, trust me. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, this is where all the journalists sit. And they look at the match and they look at the match. Uh, uh, you know when the uh, cricket players die here? Yeah? Yeah. How do they never go ahead? Because that, that grass is like a carpet. If they take us down there, I'll show you. What's called a safety control room. So we'll, we'll sit, we'll stand in there. And I'll tell you all about the safety aspect of the ground. 
um, tell you all about what the, the guides do to do the scoreboard, etc, etc. Um, and then what we're going to do is come back then and go that way, and that's when we'll go to the Sky Sports Box, the Test Match Special Radio Box, and then I'll take you down to what's called the Warwickshire Suite, which is one of our very posh rooms. Okay? Okay? Rooms. Um, they can be very much used on a match day. People can hire the whole room, and especially when it's the Ashes, England or Australia. These get sold out in minutes. Uh, obviously not cheap, not cheap at all, but lots of people also hire these rooms during the week. Not, no cricket, just hire the room. Business people yeah. will come in, perhaps the owner or the managing director will come and do a chat to his, his employees. They've got all the facilities to, to show off new products and things like that. If it's just hiring the room, it's about £250 okay. for all day for the room. Really if they want food and drink, that's obviously extra. Yeah. I, I can't create any prices because it depends what they want. They can have a buffet, they can have a hot meal, uh, they can have plenty of booze in the fridge, etc. Yeah. Um, so it's a nice place to, to be, uh, nice and quiet. And I, if, if you choose on a match day, they have their own seats just out there. Oh, okay. So if you win the lottery next week, <laughs> this is the place How to go. How much is it on a match day, for example? Sorry? How much would it be on a match day? It's a good question which I haven't got a full answer for. Once again, it depends on what you have. And what the match is. Yeah. Like. I would suspect for a match day, it's probably the same £250. Um, but you wouldn't want to sit here all day without food and drink. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, lots of people sit out there. I'm sure some guys bring their wives who can't stand cricket, but they'll come back in here and have a drink. <laughs> <laughs> if it's 250, that's not too bad. You can go with the hands together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to be more than 250. I don't think it's going to be too much. Yeah. Yeah. Probably 10 yeah. times. Probably one higher here on the back. Right, let's go and look at a really interesting <laughs> Scorers, six scorers. Wow. Have I got touch anything yet? This is a scorer's room, is it? Yeah, this is a Let me explain about, I know most of you, perhaps the kids don't understand the rules of cricket. I don't understand all the rules of cricket because there's plenty of rules, obviously. But every cricket game needs a scorer. So we have a home scorer and a away scorer. One sits there and one sits here. So they do the scoring. And the guy who sits here in front of all this stuff, and that's the, the computer that controls it all, um, it's his job to run the scoreboards. All right, so the and we have another scoreboard that's around there that you can't see, but that's the old scoreboard there. Probably some of you notice there's a picture of the bride and groom on there. They're just below us down here. Um, but um, it's it's his job here to put in that there's been a wicket or there's been a four or a two or whatever, and the, the, that ticks over automatically. He is also um, in control of the Sky Sports, so. The Sky Sports people have a, a big van here in our car park, okay. so they liaise with here to, to whatever they want to show, basically. Okay. So it's, it's quite complicated, it's very technical as you can see. Um, I don't understand it to be honest, but it's, it's, it's very good. Well, if, if there's one of those disputes, you know, where the umpire does this, 
Oh, okay. So the umpires make mistakes. Oh, okay. And it's up to the people in here with the technology. Alright, oh, okay. So is this where the third umpire like, sits? It's just like football with VAR. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, is this where the third umpire sits? Um, no, he sits somewhere else. Um, separately. But this is where the re replays. Yeah, and he'll play. link in with them as well. It's all very technical. This is probably the most important room in the whole place. This is the safety control room. So everything to do with safety for the crowd is operated in here. Now, let's see how clever some of the, the kids are. Right, how many, how many do you think Edgebaston holds? How many spectators do you think it holds, roughly? No. How many times? Oh, Dead on. <laughs> you knew, didn't you? You looked this up before, didn't you? How about that? Dead on. What I thought it was 27. 25,000. So when it's full, and it's not always full, it's full when there's a test match, it's full when we have the 2020 finals day, it'll be full when the 100 is on, but during a county game, as my wife always says, you can count the crowd. You know, there's probably less than a thousand here sometimes but test match it'll be full so 25,000 people here and it's the responsibility of the guys sitting along here and up here to look after every member of that 25,000 and they do that with the aid of cameras all around the ground that can spot any particular seat in the ground so um, all the pictures then come into those screens there, which are split into various sections. And if they can spot a problem with somebody ill, um, heart attack or, or just collapsed or whatever in the sun, or even too much to drink to be honest, <laughs> they can spot that, get onto the walkie-talkie to the nearest steward and say in block 6, row S, seat 33, whatever, somebody in trouble yeah. and they can get there and sort it out um, oh. if it's a hospital thing we have ambulances standing by when it's a big ground and they can get to the QE hospital pretty quick um, we have had problems here obviously and especially in that stand over there that's called the Eric Hollis stand that's named after one of our ex spin bowlers and that's where everybody has a good time. Yeah. And especially on the finals day, um, which is usually in September, but this year it's in July. And there's three games here, two semi-finals and a final. And everybody in that stand, well, not everybody, but 90% of people in that stand dress up. And they have all funny costumes. It's, it's hilarious. They have a good time. Uh, but of course, some of them can be here for about... 12 hours so that's a lot of beer to drink so obviously we get lots of drunken yep. sessions over there uh, but we have lots of stewards on tap on that particular day but it's good fun they have a good time and it's very colorful and then there's one just bit up the top here so we've got five of these floodlights and probably some of you have spotted the shape of the bulbs is in a shape of a knee at Edgebaston now, if it was a night game, you can see the E very easily. You can't see quite so easily now, but you know it now because I've just told you. Shape of the E. You don't get much No, I missed the recording of all of that speech about safety. You don't get that. I don't even have one recording. Incident last year, which when you gave a speech ridiculous. of how this room, um, they look the after the safety, so basically a couple of universities this room is used. To a 2020. Uh, so the six people sitting there, there spotting all the, the pitch, which was ridiculous. Uh, all the spectators, but when it's still as 25,000 people there, and to see if there's a problem, game. basically, so if they're not hard to why the illness or anything. They put a spot there and they put as far to as soon as possible. And it says Eric Hollistein, which I've been to as well, as, um, especially on the final day of T20. Most of the people are dressed up and obviously drinking a lot, so there could be a few issues there. And come back out for one of them. 
Cricket is a gentleman's sport. There's a sky sports and test match special. That's it. People like Nasser Hussain and Mike Atherton and obviously Shane Warne sat in here and for yeah, his sad yeah, demise yeah. the other week. Um, and they do kind of half hour sessions and then they swap over and go and have a drink in a little cafe we've got over the other side. So the producer usually sits up there and obviously it's a great view. But as I said down there, the Sky people come before the game, put their own adverts up and, and posh it up basically. So they have their own equipment here as well? Sorry? Do they have their own equipment like uh, yes. monitors, etc.? Oh, yeah. And as I say, the producer sits up there. And you've almost certainly watched. You know, that's a quick. You know, they'll say, oh, that's his third 100 this season. And you think, how does he know? But well, there's a computer over there with somebody that has got all this information. And he feeds it through to their thing. So they're not as clever as they make out. Radio, pure radio. You've heard of Test Match Special? Oh, yeah. Well, this is where the radio guys do their commentary. I think it's a nicer room than this, actually, because <laughs> we've got all nice pictures up in there. So we'll, we'll have a look at that. Is that where Jeffrey sits? Sorry? Jeffrey Boycott. Have to. Is that where Jeffrey Boycott sits? Yeah. Well, he did, but he's retired now. Why is he retired? There are pictures of him there. Three <laughs> <laughs> room six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. So. Opposed to, to the. <laughs> yeah. Didn't smile very often, I don't think. <laughs> but this used to be right there. Obviously, it's now hospitality is important to, to bring in money in, etc. I was told you that I worked at Aston Villa and it was prime importance to have lots of hospitality. So here, this is called the Warwickshire Suite. And on a match day, it's kind of just like this. But it can also be used for smaller weddings, parties, Christmas stuff, and, and also big meetings. Uh, this seats, when it's full, and not all the tables are out at the moment, but when it's full, this seats about 200 people for dinner. Down below, right below us now, and normally I'd take you down there, but that's where the wedding is, and that's called the banqueting suite, and that seats 600 people. So today, it didn't look 600 people there, but I, I don't know. But it's fantastic. And usually I'd love to take you down, but we, we can't gate crash a wedding, I'm afraid. <laughs> well, this is the home, Warwickshire, Chinese room. <laughs> In such a year. So they all get changed in here, and yep. then as soon as they're ready, they go and watch the game in there and get ready to go out and bat or to go out and field. So they've all got their individual lockers. Um, you can see all the equipment here the bats, the, the pads, and everything. Um, probably somebody has spotted the drink up at the top of there. Any player gets 100 in a century, he gets a bottle of champagne. If they get the ball, he gets five wickets, he gets a bottle as well. So it's probably a lot of it's fun and drunk foods up in there. Alcohol. That's <laughs> and as soon as they're ready to either go out to bat or to field, they go through here where we're going to go now and they watch the game either inside or outside depending on the weather etc. So that's where it all happens in here. Uh, and there's the gymnasium a bit further down which I'll show you. But then we're going to come back through here and we're going to go to the visitors changing room. It's nowhere near as good as this. <laughs> it's quite small. But as somebody said, we're here 24-7, whereas the away team are only here for one day or five days. So we'll go through there, we'll go through quickly, and we'll go onto the balcony, and then we can walk down the steps and stand on the outside of the pitch, where I'm sure you'll like to take some pictures. But come and have a look at the gymnasium.
they have their drink, tea, coffee, whatever. Yeah, they got more equipment here. Uh, guys, this is the visitors' room. As you could tell, the lockers are quite small. Oh, they're non-existent to me. Oh well, at least they got two round table uh, tables in the middle. You know the away team balcony. No, the umpires come out of there. The players come out of this one here. This is a balcony where the umpires come out from, and the players from that side. Yeah. Or oh, they go back in there when they get out. <laughs> huh? You think how nerve wracking it is going Stand down there to bat with Players come out from there. The white chain come out of there. Right, I could, f I could finally have my lifelong dream of walking down the balcony. But without the kit. <laughs> Next time I'll wear a kit and come in. Helmet pad, everything. I should have known. So once again, I will gladly take a group photograph. Yeah. Indian guy back in 1994. So to score 500 runs on your own is incredible. So where we're finishing the tour off now is what's called the 501 room, which is an extra. Oh, he's got a grounder. Yeah. When you go in you'll see on the wall, all along the left hand side, every ball he faced. There's like a little plaque of a ball all along the wall and shows all 424 balls he faced. So it's fantastic. So again, how, how many every ball he faced and it tells you that he got a whatever, six to get 250 or he got a single to get 300 or whatever. So we have a look. So there you go, the guy. He's face. Apparently, face 474 so balls to score 500 on that height. So he's got fours, ones, singles, dots. There is 50 of 80 balls. Then going along, there's 350 of 311, 250 of 245, 450 of 398. Then he's got 150 of 193 with the four. Oh, he's hit a lot of fours to get the scores. 300 of 278, again he hit a 4, 400 of 350, again he hit a 4, and 100 of 130, again he hit a 4, oh sorry, it's 427 ball, not, apologies, 472, 427 ball to get 501, immense, remember this is 1994 when he scored that, over 100, strike rate of over 100. Oh, so this is the rest of the room. So I guess people sit here and watch cricket. There's a bar there. And some coffee, tea. I'm assuming there'll be food as well on the, on the day. Much day. Yeah, it's a corporate room, so people rent a hire out. For meetings, etc. Companies. And the match day. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't and share this video with everyone else who loves cricket.